Well, here I am again. Okay, now, especially you new folks, you go out to the fossil collect with people, and you, you might show up with some other folks, and you're going to get all kinds of information. How to do this and how to do that and what kind of equipment you need. Throw it all away. I have the answer. <laughs> all that other stuff is just opinions. But I will tell you, I will reveal for you, everything I show you is absolutely necessary. Right? Okay. First, you need to have a box to carry everything in. And a car with a trunk big enough to put it in. <laughs> Actually, I'm just kidding. You don't need all this stuff, but if you get to the nut stage, then you do. And that's kind of where uh, I ended up. So, uh, the biggest thing about collecting fossils in this area, or probably any area, is spending time. You can't expect to go to a field trip site or a collecting site you know yourself and be there for a couple hours and find a few things that they won't. How comes somebody I know has hundreds of fossils from here? And I only found a handful of things and I don't have any really cool stuff. Because the other person spent time there, maybe not time. And the best thing you can do to collect fossils here, and it was kind of tough to do this summer, was be the first person to your favorite collecting site after it rains. Because that's going to wash out new fossils. There could be a millimeter of dirt on top of a really cool trilobite that you don't even see until rain comes. And then there it is. So, uh, repetition in time. Now, you do need some equipment. And I have a little bit of equipment that I can take with me. Just, you know, just to be sure. I'm kind of lazy. I, you know, I'm up on a road cut and I'm, I find something that I need to have some little thing that I don't have that's in the car. I'm going to go all the way back down because I'm going to go back up and find the same thing I carry with me. So uh, last time I did this talk, this didn't fit, but uh, it's an adjustments. Adjustments made. So I, I wear this little contraption, and those of you who have seen me out there know that I do. And there's all kinds of cool stuff on here. Uh, it's obviously one of those army, military kind of things. They got all, they got all kinds of neat pouches on there. So I have, at, at ready disposal, I have a putty knife, in case I need to pry something up a little bit. Uh, like a little spatula, same kind of technique, but for smaller, more delicate things. A chisel to whack on, I'll talk about that a little bit later. And somewhere in here. A little pad of paper to write on, and hopefully there's a pen in here, but maybe not. Uh, to tell, you know, to write down where you found something, because that's very important. Where you found a, a fossil. If you go to collecting uh, all day and you go to different sites, you throw it all in the same bag, you don't know where it came from, that's, that's not a good thing. We always promote identification of where things came from, which is why Steve uh, said he would give a little locality information to you about the external top of it. And this one I have what's even more valuable, little containers. And uh, I like this one in particular because it has a little foam rubber thing in it. So I can put little teeny trilobites or crinoids in here and cover them up with a foam rubber they don't bang around. Fine glass. I'm going to a little, little one away here earlier. Uh, I don't like this, but uh, for like the 10X, some people like the 7, you get a 20 also in this style. But sometimes you're going to find something really tiny, you can't tell what it is. And the important thing for you to do is, if you find something and it looks like something, but you don't know what it is, bring it here, we'll tell you. If it's really something, a lot of times you'll see a, a fract fragment of something that looks like it might belong to something or it might be a whole one of these. Uh, you bring it in here, we might be able to tell you what it is. More like to somebody will. Okay, back here. Got my ready disposal, our collecting bags. These are uh, lead shot bags, canvas. I have a demonstration about this. It's unfortunate this red can isn't here because uh, some people in this club, some of the people have been in a long time, they got started on a kick of using coffee cans to collect their fossils. Now, I don't have a coffee can tonight. But I have a little butter chuck. So I have this demonstration for you. I have in here some bryozoan fossils that are going to be in the kits. If you're up on that collecting site, a steep hill, and you set your little thing down, and you're moving around, all of a sudden, oh, oh your fossils fall out on the, on the site, right on the thing. 
and you're trying to find them all, and you had this really cool thing in there, and now you can't find it. Now, this is why you need a collecting bag. Because no matter how hard you try, you can't knock that over. If you do, it folds up on itself. So I've never lost any fossils that way. So it's unfortunate that Greg wasn't here to see that demonstration. <laughs> <laughs> Even old timers like Greg can benefit from new technology. <coughs> Which they do get a little dusty. But anyway, this thing is full of that kind of stuff. Now, depending on where I'm going, sometimes I add a little bit more to this set of things. Actually, I used to carry this every time I went fossil hunting, I mean in the car. And uh, then I got a little more lazy, and now uh, I dump my stuff in uh, one of these guys, one or two of them. Uh, these come in handy for a number of reasons. Sometimes you find stuff that's too big for your bag, and it has to go in here, or you might actually want to take some dirt. So I'm going to in here some more essentials. Uh, sunblock with bug juice in it, four little containers, another chisel, uh, first aid stuff that hasn't been used in years. But you'll, if you've been out collecting at all, you know that the fossils, especially the broken ones, are very sharp, uh, and they will cut you. And uh, let's we get into this. That uh, reminds me of something else. When I collect, I usually don't collect in a t-shirt. I don't collect in shorts. And I don't collect with tennis shoes on. And these are, these are my opinions, and of course you all should adhere to them. Um, the jeans and a long sleeve shirt. Uh, I usually have a canvas shirt on because those fossils are sharp. And of course, due to my uh, excellent dexterity and antelope-like characteristics on the side of the hill, I haven't got to fall down, but just in case I'm covered. The other thing is, uh, oh boy, I can't do that anymore. I like high top uh, work boots. And the reason I like them is I went collecting the very first time with uh, an experienced collector and I wore tennis shoes and my feet and ankles were killing me because we've been out for six or eight hours uh, with a, a shoe. These shoes actually are just kind of an example. They're actually too flexible. You need a stiff sole in the boot. And what I do with this device, is dig little footholds, and you can push a little stiff shoe in that foothold, and your feet and ankles will be a lot more um, refreshed, if you will, by the end of the day than if you're in tennis shoes. And um, you know, a lot of these road cuts, I mean, especially the one up uh, near Richmond, Indiana, it's very rubbly, and that, in essence, is trying to walk on marbles. So there's really nothing to get a grip on. So that's what I use this for. And uh, put my glasses down. I'll uh, take this off. You can hang all kinds of other stuff on here. Oh, yes. Where's your AK-47? Well, I don't have that, but I, I, do, I do have a survival knife. And uh, I have uh, I've actually put this to use. Actually, I carry this because I have this fear. I, I've collected alone a lot. My collecting partner uh, uh, kind of retired from that and got a business, and he didn't have any time. So uh, I have this fear of being down somewhere along the AA highway, and a pack of wild dogs comes out. So I'm ready. You know, I got this in one hand, and I got this big knife in the other. Uh, and I did have to use it once, but it was uh, actually to cut off my underwear. So. <laughs> there, there are there are certain circumstances, you know, that you just got to do something like that. <laughs> <laughs> the other item on there is a canteen, and uh, I don't know if this is cause and effect or not, but after I've been fossil hunting for a few years, I started to get kidney stones, and uh, basically they, asked, they told me, you got to drink more water, and if you're out collecting, and you're out there in the heat, my friend and I, we collect, it was 90 degrees, we didn't care, we didn't care about 90 degrees, uh, I'll be out there collecting, if you don't drink a lot of water, you're going to get dehydrated. And that's not good for people like me that get kidney stones. 